Hi, everybody, and welcome back to My Zero Carb Life. I'm Kelly Hogan, and I'm thrilled today to be joined by Rebecca Farmer. Rebecca is a health and life coach, and she's been carnivore since May of 2019, strictly, but keto and carnivore-ish before that. Um, Rebecca, I am very embarrassed to, to admit this, but I'm going to do it right now to everybody because I feel like I'm probably not the only one, and it's a, it's a crying shame, but here it is. I have seen you and your pictures and your story off and on for years, months, <laughs> off and on. It's, it's 2020. Every month counts as a year, right? <laughs> so for several months now, I've seen your pictures and I was always like, wow, she's looking good. And I, I personally just assumed that you had had an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I kind of assumed a lot about your story without actually reading, even though you had written and written, this is the embarrassing part. You had made it so clear all along about your issues. You've dealt with osteoporosis since the sixth grade, anxiety, and all of this is not just like, I felt like I had osteoporosis. This is all completely diagnosed. Yeah. Osteoporosis, OCD, insomnia, narcolepsy, celiac disease, IBS, costochondritis which pause there for a moment i had costochondritis prior to really? oh my good gosh that hurts right it's bad i couldn't breathe right you feel like you literally can't breathe so you and i had a similar experience we both felt like we were dying of heart attacks at a very young age yeah and it's the um the connecting part to your sternum becomes inflamed right and and you literally feel like you're dying. So we were both rushed to the emergency room for custom. I didn't know that about you. Yeah, it's one of those wow. weird parts of my story that I hardly ever mention. But when I read it about you, I was like, oh my gosh, same. Yeah. Awful. And you were bed bound for a while because you also had extreme chronic fatigue, chronic pain. I mean, just reading your story where you've come from is, it's amazing. It's amazing. And yet in my mind, because I just kept seeing, it's like my, my mind couldn't get past your pictures and the pictures, all I kept thinking I was seeing was anorexia yeah. or a, an eating disorder. And so I remember I messaged you one day and I was like, you know, if you'd ever like to come on and talk about eating disorders, that would be great. And you were like, <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I didn't have an eating disorder. So, okay. Number one, I am so sorry. I let my eyes overrule what you were trying to tell me. Yeah. I'm so glad that we're starting out this way because I still get it. Um, Michaela Peterson just made a post about me and I see these comments like that's what anorexia will do to you. And it's like, I was never anorexic. So thank you for addressing this. And there's no apology necessary. That's what I would assume. It's human nature. So the, the reason I was so emaciated was due to a chronic C. diff infection. C. diff is a bad bacteria that takes over the good bacteria in your gut. And I truly was eating 6,000 calories at one point per day and still losing weight. So that's what C. diff will do to you. And for anyone that doesn't believe me, just Google C. diff and you'll see people even more emaciated than I was. So now I'm, I'm on this gut health kick and I just did this video a week or two ago with Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride. And I know you and I have talked and you watched it. I don't know if you were as fired up as I was, but when she was talking about healing the gut and how only animal products can help rebuild parts of your body. Oh my gosh. How she was fantastic, right? Yeah. She was amazing. Yeah. I loved her. So now that I've done part one, all about what goes wrong in the gut how your flora dies and all of that. Hopefully people have watched part one. I really wanted to do part two with you because you are the living proof example of what she was talking about. And you have lived it when I have not. And neither has Dr. Natasha, frankly. She has not gone through all of the 10 plus autoimmune disorders that you have been officially diagnosed with and the gut problems. So I wanted to know, was there anything in the video with Dr. Natasha that you felt kind of like, I don't know, you didn't feel like it quite applied to you or it just seemed like maybe it didn't work with your experience? The only thing, truly, the only thing that stood out was when she said something about humans 
coming from the ocean. Yeah. Um, I do not believe that. Right. I believe that we were created in the image of God and we are, we're different than animals yeah. in many ways. Um, so that I was just like, what? So yeah, I, I am with you on that. And that's been the number one complaint about that entire video was, yeah, I don't think that's how we got here either. But that wasn't the point of her talk. But yes, that definitely stood out to me as well. But everything else she said, I was impressed at how much I resonated with it. It was like, wow, I thought this was just me. So it was really cool that she figured that out. She knows her stuff. Yes. And it's just so cool. All right. I'll tell you the second thing that bothered me. And it's only because not my personal experience. I just hear this a lot from people is that fermented foods and broths actually really do bother a lot of people with, with histamine issues. And, and I just hear that so much people who say I've really tried to do broths, but the histamines flare up and the same thing for anything fermented. And so you, I've heard you say before that you don't believe that all of the broths are completely necessary, but that you know people that it's healed. So were the meat broths a big part of your healing or no? Yes. Yeah. I believe that they were. However, in my opinion, healing is not linear. There are some things that I put myself through, especially in the beginning. I, I have been diagnosed with mast cell activation syndrome. And for anyone that has that, I'm so sorry because you react to everything. And so I knew in the beginning, there were going to be some times where I just didn't do great with what I was eating. So I chose to do bone broth, even though I had some histamine issues, doing it in an Instapot helps, but I didn't even know that at the time I didn't have an Instapot. Um, and I intuitively started choosing meat broth over bone broth. I did notice a difference. So I started using chicken feet and pig ears and I perked up when I heard her mention this because I had so many people around me, like this girl is nuts, like cutting these fingernails off of the chicken feet. They thought I was a crazy person, but it made a difference. I felt the healing and many of my autoimmune issues are actually connective tissue diseases. So, um, something in me was like, I need collagen. And there are, there are people that say too much collagen, you know, it can turn to oxalate as well. So that was another thing that I had to decide, okay, am I going to take this risk for the sake of healing and sealing my gut? And I did because I, it made a difference, but everyone is different. Yeah. I know when I was listening to her talk about the healing power of all this collagen and stuff, that just wasn't part of my journey. I just went from yeah. eating junk to eating meat. Yeah. It, and that's all I needed to do. But we were talking in that video about the 20% of people who need something more than that. Exactly. Yep. And I'm, I'm part of that 20%. And that's the difference. Not everyone needs it. Most people, I don't think they do need it. And even, you know, if I hadn't done the bone broth, I'm sure I still would have had significant healing. Um, but it definitely helped. And I've never used fermented foods. Okay. Um, I actually stay away from those for the most part for what it's worth, but some people feel better with them. Um, uh, I think that's along the topic of probiotics and stuff, which is different. Right. But even without taking probiotics or take eating probiotic type foods, your gut flora now, I assume is in much better shape. Yes. It's excellent. Everything is, everything feels textbook. Perfect. It is. That's what the doctors say when they look at my labs and um, my digestion is amazing compared to, there were some things that you haven't mentioned like gastroparesis. Um, I had ulcerative colitis and these things are really painful. It's hard to eat. I was involuntarily throwing up, which is really bad when you're being accused of having an eating disorder <laughs> and all of this healed up. It reversed. So yeah, no fermented foods okay. or probios. All right. So you went from severe emaciation to now, oh my gosh, you've got a dream figure. You are, oh, so thank you. Cool. You look muscular, but not like you look feminine muscular. You look <laughs> strong and healthy and so pretty. But along that way, going from this to this, even though you didn't have an eating disorder, 
I myself have struggled at times with body dysmorphia and my mind catching up to what's actually in the mirror. Was that a struggle at all for you? Yes. Okay. I think that anyone that gains or loses a significant amount of weight is going to go through this. And I knew that I couldn't trust the reflection in the mirror. I mean, even still, I will ask people, do I look healthy? I feel healthy, but please let me know if I am pushing the limit or if I could put on more weight because I know that I, it's been distorted. It's human nature. So I never was looking in the mirror, wishing that I looked different. It was more like making sure that I wasn't going to judge myself. And honestly, in the beginning, I took down my full length mirror and I just didn't look at my lower body because it was scary. It was like, I don't know how this weight is going to go on, but I've got to gain weight. I was eating dairy in the beginning just to gain weight. I desperately needed to pack on some pounds. So I didn't know if it was just going to go in all the wrong places and I didn't want to freak myself out. And I got rid of my clothing, you know, all my double zero junior pants, um, just got rid of it. I I'm wearing the same shorts in every single picture for a reason. They're stretchy. <laughs> it's definitely a mental battle, but so worth it. And I imagine that gaining weight, even when you desperately need to, I have heard that it is incredibly hard to put on healthy weight that a yeah. lot of times people will end up looking like sort of skinny fat or, or like you're describing, but it is so amazing to look at your pictures because you look like you've always been like this perfectly shapely little fitness queen and you don't look like you ever lost a lot or gained a lot. And I just think that is such a testament to eating animals because you built yes. hormones, hormones dictate body composition. I, so I was misdiagnosed with an eating disorder and held against my will in an eating disorder unit where I refed for an entire month. I packed on like 20 pounds in there that was bad weight. It looked bad. It was in all the wrong places. And that's because I was fed the diet that I was forced to eat, which is a standard diabetic diet, 75% carbohydrates, um, all of these vegetable oils, crap, yeah. not to mention all my labs were off the charts, even worse when I came out of there. I knew going into carnivore that it was going to protect my hormones. And I know that hormones dictate body composition. So I have gained 65 pounds but honestly, I don't think it looks like I've gained that much. Like it, it has gone in the right places and it's muscle. It's not fat. I have, um, you know, a healthy amount of body fat now, but I'm still relatively low fat. That alone is a reason for someone to stick with carnivore because there are so many, so many things that you can optimize within the refeeding process, your blood sugars. It's so painful to have your blood sugar spike all over the place because you're trying to eat at a surplus and it, you're in inflammation all the time. But with carnivore, it was easier for me to eat at a, at a surplus. Fat to protein ratio. Do you change it day to day? Do you tend to stay high fat, low fat? Where are you on that? It changes. It, this is why it's so bio-individual depending on the person. Yeah. So in the beginning, I was very high fat. Um, once upon a time, I was dealing with non-epileptic seizures. I had that severe adrenal fatigue. So I definitely was doing like four to one fat to protein ratio in the beginning. But in May, 2019, when I decided, okay, I'm going to do carnivore my way this time and throw some of the stuff out the window just to make it sustainable for me. Yes. Um, at that time, I also put away my glucose monitor for probably two months because I knew my blood sugar was going to rise. I had to eat more than 15, 30 grams of protein per day. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be hard, but it was a lot easier than I thought. And it turns out my blood sugar stabilized very quickly. Um, so I quickly lowered the fat and I stayed around a two to one fat to protein ratio. Um, just because I wanted my hormones to be fueled properly and they are fueled by cholesterol. With the healing that I've been through, I have slowly but surely increased the protein more and more. And that has gone along with increasing my, um, my exercise. You know, I was not heavy lifting in the beginning, but I am, I just hip thrusted 190 pounds, you know, and I used to weigh 65 pounds, which is crazy oh. to say. Yes. So 
um, you know, I, I ate to my needs and, and my labs, if my hormones still needed support, I would definitely keep that fat up. But now I am eating more protein than what I will recommend to my clients. I am, I've been doing a high protein experiment and, um, I have been eating 250 grams of protein per day and around 50 grams of fat. And I feel fan freaking fantastic. My ketones are higher eating high protein now than they were when I was eating high fat. And that speaks to the level of healing that I've gone through. Yeah. I am entirely insulin sensitive. Um, so I just want people to know if it changes, it depends on your level of fat adaption. It depends on your stress levels. When I'm not doing this high protein experiment, I'm probably eating around a one-to-one fat to protein ratio because I'm not trying to gain any more weight right now. I love getting stronger and gaining muscle. So that's my focus. Um, so I'm not really adding extra fat unless I crave it yeah. where I love eating sticks of butter. So I'm not afraid of it. Um, that's just what I'm comfortable with. Just like you, you crave it some days and you listen. And that's, that's what I want everyone to experience instead of just following the specific ratio, because that can really sidetrack you from your own intuition and what your body really wants. I tried only beef, salt, and water, and I couldn't do it. Um, and it, it works for a lot of people. Um, and I do eat fish too. So beef, salt, and water only works for people if they're able to do it, right? I mean, exactly. if you're willing to keep that up or beef and no salt, some people do beef, no salt in water. You yeah. can only do these things if you're willing to do them. And so Dana Spencer, she's been carnivore almost 13 years. She says to people frequently, especially when you're starting out, but she says, even if you need to do it forever, have as much variety as you want. If you want all of the omelets and sausages and pork rinds yeah. and sour cream, like if that's what you need to do to stay carnivore, then that's better yes. than not staying carnivore. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you are stressed out and you're not enjoying what you're eating, yeah. then you, it will work against you. Like physiologically, it's not just a mind thing that you can overcome. Like you're going to be stressed out and you're going to feel restricted and it will work against you. And I totally feel a different way. That's why I allowed myself. I used stevia in the beginning yeah. and I knew I was addicted to it, but guess what? That's what made it sustainable for me. And I think it's really about being mindful of why carnivore works, the mechanisms behind it. So it's avoiding the anti-nutrients, oxalates, and um, getting the right nutrients. So as long as you're following that, it doesn't have to be rigid. It doesn't. It's about what works best for you and supporting your body at a systemic level. And knowing your own self. So you know that you can handle some stevia. I tried some um, sugar-free gum and could not stop thinking about sugar-free gum. That's the level yeah. of, I, like, I have to be crazy strict with myself. It wasn't even, it was minty. It wasn't even like a fruity kind of taste. So I just know myself, I don't touch sweeteners at all, but I also had a very different history than you did. I was a 260 pound woman with a crazy sweet tooth. We have different needs. Exactly. That's all about, you know, our neurotransmitters. I was addicted to the Zevia sodas. Okay. Um, totally addicted. And I was just like, I've got to cut this out, but now I don't crave sweets. And so we, everyone can arrive to leptin sensitivity in a different way, but yeah. once you get there, the addiction stops and it doesn't look the same from person to person. Right. That's like Nisha Berry. She can handle having some onions with her meat and a little I bit couldn't of, do that. of avocado. No plants to me. Oh my gosh. My gut hurts. Just almost looking at the pictures, but yeah. her body, she again has totally different history. She was right. heavier than she is now, but she was never like morbidly obese Yeah, you know, or autoimmune disorders that I, uh, Hashimoto's, you know? Yep. I yeah. had Hashimoto's too. Oh, but yeah. you feel like you absolutely best for you. No plants at all. Yes. Yeah. I tested lettuce, romaine lettuce this past summer and I didn't feel optimal. And I was actually surprised that it affected my brain still. I was sort of apathetic 
Yeah. And yeah. I can feel my mood disorders creeping back. And that's what's freaky is just one night of eating the wrong thing. It didn't settle with me. But I do find that the longer my gut has been healed, the more I do tolerate. So I might do fine with it now, but I don't because I crave meat. I'm serious. And it's amazing to have this food freedom. And when people say this is restrictive, it's like, I've never been more free. Okay. We don't really typically talk calories in the carnivore world, but I think people are probably curious. I've heard you say that you eat a lot. Do you ever count? Do you have any idea how many calories you eat? Yes. So sake of data, I am a total data nerd. I'm a geek about it. And while I was trying to gain weight, you know, it matters. Yes. Um, Making sure that I was getting enough. So I do not track every day, but now it's just from season to season just to see where I'm at. Um, So I am around 2,200 per day. And I, sometimes I have to eat, I'm still keeping up fat refeed days um, where I just eat as uh, at a surplus on purpose because I don't want my hormones to downregulate. And I, with what I've been through, like I would rather gain weight than lose weight and I can lose weight very easily. My, my hormones are working really well. I am so used to in the carnivore world. It's always about losing weight. I mean, you know, you must feel like sometimes like, hello, hello. (laughs) Cause the entire world is just trying to lose weight. We've got to get a whole mindset. It's health. I'm in a group called zeroing in on health. I'm an administrator there. We are zeroed in on health, Rebecca. It's all about health. But then when I'm reading your story, it's like, oh, this is not about weight loss. Huh? Like it's really most people are just about weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. And we've got to get in a different mindset. We're trying to get healthy. We want to live longer, happier, healthier lives, not just get skinny. But even as I've preached it so much. But that was what I think was keeping me from really seeing you for who you are is because that's all I'm used to filtering things by is weight loss. And it's ridiculous. Even myself, I set a goal weight for myself in the beginning, which was like 110, 115 pounds. And I was like, I'm going to get there and I'll stay there because that's the weight where you can still get away with wearing pretty much whatever you want because you're still thin. But then I realized, I think I want to be stronger because I really liked the feeling of being stronger. So I'm like 127, 130 pounds, which is at the top of my weight limit for like five, six. And I feel so good. I would not want to lose any of this. I just would really encourage people to listen to how you feel. Health is what matters most. If you feel good, you're going to look good. Menstrual cycles. Do you have a cycle each month now? Yes. Yeah. My cycle has come and gone a total of three times in my entire life. Um, it came back when I was, when I got back to that around actually 108 pounds, it came back and I do work with clients with their cycles. And I would just, I just want to say you do not need carbohydrates. No, No, back your cycle. You need enough fat. Fat. I you need enough fat. Yes. I'm not a Nazi. I'm not a carb Nazi. Right. But for those who say you need carbs, it's not true. Yeah. It's not. My cycle, I did not have one for two years until I cut out the last of the carbs. So when that's I- what I'm saying. Yeah. It, yeah, totally. And all these people getting pregnant with carnivore. I mean, it's amazing. It's so cool. All right. There's a part of your story that I know. I know very little about this process whatsoever, and it's not dinner conversation by any stretch, but I am curious um, how much of a part you think this played. You have had three fecal transplants, correct? Yep, correct. Okay, for people who are in this 20% who are struggling with major gut issues, do you feel like that was a pretty big step in the healing? Was that helpful to you? Do you ever recommend it to people? Yes. I think that they would work for a lot of people. They did not work for me because my C. diff infection was deeply seeded. So that means that it was there for probably years before I tested for it. Most people catch it earlier on. Um, and in that case, I do believe that fecal transplants are very effective. I will say I, the C. diff infection persisted after each one for me, but even so 
I felt a difference in my mood the next day. It was so weird. And that just speaks to how much, you know, it is our second brain. Yes. Our gut. And I felt, I mean, it wasn't huge. I wasn't like tripping or anything, but it was, I felt like a different, like a different aspect to my personality. Okay. It was really interesting. Were you carnivore when you did that? Or was this prior to trying? Okay. This was Yep. I was keto, but that was not the answer for you. I was just wondering how much of a part that really played, but that wasn't it. No, that's the whole point is that I, nothing worked. And it wasn't until I removed the anti-nutrients and started eating only meat. I think it has to do with both removing anti-nutrients and eating enough of these nutrient dense bioavailable foods. Meat is more bioavailable than a feeding tube. Um, and then also healing my gut with all of the animal fats. So it all worked together. I know that you are a life and health coach and that you have clients and I'm going to post your contact information in the video description. When you're working with clients, don't you find that you see results in that second month pretty quickly? Yes. I've never heard anyone specifically say the second month except for you, but that's That's what I find with most of my clients. And it's the second month where especially people with autoimmune issues, we start seeing huge changes. Like I'm talking someone who had psoriasis her entire life, her, the skin on her hands and her face are peeling off. And then by the second month, her skin is glowing and smooth. And I will say that I've noticed that people with thyroid issues, it typically takes longer. The thyroid, it just takes longer. And then if you have months, you know, if you've lost your period, Things have to go in the right direction for at least six months before you actually start to have a period. Yes. A lot of it is being patient, but I noticed improvements within the first two weeks in my mood and my energy. Huge. So when you talk about what you're able to eat now with some leniency, carnivore wise variety, do you eat, I know you eat eggs and I know you eat butter. Do you drink coffee? No, Uh, I tested coffee recently and I... I felt I had more energy for sure. I'm very caffeine sensitive, Um, but it was not good energy. It was anxious energy. And I noticed that it messed with my digestion. So it does deplete your stomach enzymes. That's a fact. Uh, But various other meats, pork and chicken. Do you eat much pork or chicken? Not much because I don't eat them. For some people, they do fantastic with it. I mean, so many people, seriously, but we've got to think about amino acid profiles. If you look at the difference between beef and chicken and the nutrients, um, not just the fat, the type of fat, which is also significant. There are a lot of reasons why I crave red meat over chicken or pork. And that's what I stick with. I do have some bacon in my freezer that I plan on having probably around Christmas time. Cause it's a treat. It's fun. It's not a big part of most of my days. Um, I enjoy it just as some variety. My father-in-law cooks for us every Sunday and it's typically, uh, it's a wide variety of meats and I partake cause it's great, but my gut is, my gut is not very sensitive. I can eat all manner of animal products and it doesn't bother my stomach. Uh, yeah. But for those that do most, I think I hear most often that beef, beef, <laughs> beef and lamb I think lamb is also one of those ones that's I've never heard of anyone reacting to lamb oh great okay good so if you get a new client and I know there's a million different types of gut issues and you would have to get their specifics but yeah. if it's somebody who's really new to the idea of carnivore and they say look I heard that you healed some stuff with carnivore and I am having severe again this is not the 80 percent who can just say oh eat some steaks you, you know, live it up, go eat whatever meat you want to. That was me. Eat whatever meat you want to, just avoid the carbs, live happily ever after. Ta da! That was me. But I'm an 80 percenter, and that's a rough estimate just from what I've observed. Most people can do that and feel great. But for yeah. the 20% with really, uh, they're sick. These people are sick. How would you encourage them to get started? I would say probably stay away from egg whites, pork and chicken, because all of those can cause issues within our central nervous system and our immune system. Um, Unless it was a matter of sticking to it versus, you know, carbs or sugar. 
So it depends on where the person is at, but if they're just looking at healing the gut and they don't have any issues with variety or anything, I would say focus on fatty ruminant meat Okay. and lower histamines as much as possible, but realize, like I mentioned in the beginning, that it, it's not going to be perfect. Um, and if you want to avoid everything with histamines, then do so, but you've got to make your choices. I do think that the broth is really helpful. So, I mean, doing only red meat is really good for some people, but again, if you're, if you're feeling restricted, it's not going to work. And I don't think that fatty lamb is hurtful. All right. So beef, lamb, broths, if they can tolerate it, histamine wise. Uh, if they, all right. Egg yolks. Those are fantastic. Okay. They're loaded with nutrients. It's about what they can tolerate. Um, so these things are not bad for the gut. It's about what your immune system has already decided is a problem. And that looks different from person to person. So we develop food allergies when we eat something during a time that our gut is in a permeable state. Okay. Okay. So my food intolerances are going to look different from another person, depending on when I ate that food last. And when my body last decided this is leached into my bloodstream and I'm reacting to it. So it is different from person to person, but some of the most common ones we can stay away from like pork, chicken, and egg whites for a time for a specific time. Have you experimented much with raw dairy? No, I can't seem to get my hands on raw dairy on, you know, unpasteurized dairy. Um, and I did do it in the beginning. I tried to stick with hard cheddar and Parmesan, which tend to be easier, but it was still inflammatory for me. I did it because it was, I knew it was going to be hyper palatable. So for most people, I would stay away from it. It gunked up my digestive tract. Um, it messed with my hunger signals in the way that I needed, but not necessarily optimal, but butter, butter doesn't count to me. Grass fed butter is it's different because it doesn't contain the dairy proteins and you know, everything like that. I hear that so frequently. And that's exactly true for me too. If I ate as much cheese as I do butter, Oh, uh, my skin would be wrecked, uh, yeah. bathrooming problems, sinusy issues, but butter just doesn't seem to have that effect on me. And I hear that from people a lot. Hey, you mentioned grass fed beef for you. And again, this is not me. I love grain finished beef and I'm not talking about for the environment. I just mean for how much it costs for the taste, for accessibility, mm-hmm. I can tolerate grain finished beef. No problem. But 80%, 20%. You have issues that I don't have. Can you tell a difference in how you feel? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to be honest, but I don't want to scare anyone from eating grain fed because I will say I have clients with severe autoimmune issues who do better with grain fed meat than grass fed. But for me personally, I stocked up on some ribeyes from Costco whenever the virus got big. And I was like, I need to stock up on meat. I'm just going to get grain fed. I ate one of those and my eyes were so swollen the next morning. I mean, almost swollen shut. I had a severe reaction. Oh, that's not the first time it's happened. And I, I stick with grass fed for so many different reasons. Um, I want to support the farmers that take care of their, their animals it it just makes such a difference in my inflammation levels, but that's just me. It really depends on where you're coming from. If someone is just looking to eat more fat instead of sugar, grain fed might be the better option. It really might be. I hear it both ways. Um, I've got a lot of carnivore friends and some cannot stand grain finish and some cannot stand grass finished. Yeah. And you know, either one is going to be better than the pop tart. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So if you like it and that's what you can afford and you feel, you know, there's, if there's a mental block to the fact that you can't eat grain finish because it bothers you so much about where the cows came from or the environment and those kind of things, you have to just take all of you into account when it comes to your food. Right. Yep. I think that many of us get very caught up in perfectionism. Um, and if, you know, it's about what works for you, what is, realistic and practical is just as important. Even if you think I'm at a level 10, I'm feeling good. Well, you know, 
aim for an 11, I guess, if you want to try something yeah. new. If you want to try something new, I think there's always room for experimentation to try. When I added organs, my eyes were so itchy. I, I do think I overdid it. I felt like I had been around something I was very allergic to, just like scratching wow. itchy eyes. I, I didn't feel as good as I did before. So, but good to know, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And I don't, I think that's why I get frustrated when I do hear so many rules thrown out as if you have to, you have to use salt, you have to take this and that, you right. have to eat the organs, you must have grain fed. And I'm thinking, but if you can see even one person where that's not the case, then it's no longer a have to. I just think we exactly. should make it about ourselves. What you have to do, I'm not going to argue with that. If you tell me that you, Rebecca, feel better eating organs mm -hmm. and that you feel great lifting weights and you feel great on gra grass finished beef, great. That, I mean, no arguments for me because that's your body. And I just, right. I just, I wish the message was message was always just very individualized for people. Now, if somebody says, I feel so good eating donuts, this is my face. Like <laughs> my husband is one of those where he does feel good for the most part, eating total crap. He does. Well, he's easy to take care of, I guess. <laughs> he is very easy to take care of, but I worry for him in the future. Because just because he feels great in this moment does not mean he always will, but he is a smart man. I hope that when he does stop feeling good, I hope he will make adjustments. And I say that for myself. Sometimes people say, well, yeah, you feel good drinking your coffee and eating beef and not organs now. Just wait. And I say, okay, then I will wait. Because when this changes, if my cycle wasn't regular, if my skin wasn't clear, if my energy wasn't awesome, I can always make those changes like anyone right. else. I'm not stuck in this. It's just working for me at the moment. So. Right. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of what um, Dr. Natasha mentioned when she said there are some people that just keep going and there comes a point where if it's working for you, then stop, stop experimenting. And I really like that she said that because when you're coming from healing something or a lot of different things, we can kind of get stuck in this mode where it's like, it's never enough. And Sometimes we just have to stop and realize this is good and just be grateful and live your life. That was such a powerful part for me. I'm glad it hit home with you too. She said, stop obsessing. Like this is our lives. There's yeah. more to our lives than so hey, much. Then I'm pooping regularly, and, which is awesome. Having a cycle is great and sleeping deeply is great. All of these things yeah. are so good. But if every moment of our day is analyzing, analyzing, tweaking, changing, then at some point exactly. you're, you're 80 and that was your life. Exactly. And now, and I think it's so important for people to assess what is your why. So yeah. for me, a big why for me was my niece. She had only known me at my emaciated state and I wanted to be this strong independent, powerful woman that she could look up to that could actually pick her up and keep up with her and have energy and I got to that point and I was so happy and it was no longer as urgent to do everything perfectly. I think keeping, um, keeping that in mind, what is your why? Why do we strive for optimal health and to feel our best? It's so that we can show up for other people and all of these different reasons and show up for ourselves. It's, yeah. not, it's not just to do it, just to do it. That would be horrible. Yes, it's not to win carnivore of the year or have the most, you know, squeaky clean food journal of all time. Ta-da! <laughs> like, right. no one's going to read your Fit Day app at your funeral. No one's going to read your food diary. It's literally what you're doing while you feel good. What are you yeah. doing while you have this energy and while you are well rested and while you are well fed? I think we're sometimes missing. That's the whole point. I love your outlook on life. I love that you are a woman of faith. I love that you have been through so much, but you aren't bitter about it. You're also so kind and gracious to people like me who misunderstood you at first, but I'm getting you now. I'm here for you. <laughs> 
And, and I'm so thankful that you take the time to share with other people. You are making a major difference. And I'm so thrilled that you came to talk to me today. I am so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you and everything that you do. This community is so important to me. If anybody needs personal coaching and help getting started or how to deal with a specific issue, I am not your girl. I don't know. I am the meat and water girl. Eat your meat, drink your water. Got it. And I'm here to make you feel great about eating meat and saving humans. But if you need something specific, somebody who's lived it and who has much more science behind how to help you with specifics, then go below, look up her coaching information, and she can get much more detail about your history and help you through it. So thank you. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.